Welcome to a follow-up video on the 25 watt desk heater. If you haven't seen the main video, go and check that out first. I'll put a link in the description and one of the things up here. This is a follow-up video because uh, there's a couple things that I forgot to talk about in the main video that I really want to, to mention. Um, one is the, the heater that I got is an ABN. This was off of Amazon for, I don't know, about 16 bucks, somewhere in there. Um, this is, you know, obviously a cheap Chinese knockoff of a higher quality one. Don't go super cheap on these because it may have a potential to, you know, be a fire hazard. But, you know, make your own wise decision there. Uh, the other thing is that I did not go over any of the electrical stuff on that heater. So I will be doing that now with the ubiquitous hoppy meter. So I'll just plug this in here and power it on. Here's the cable for the heater that is under my desk over there. And let's see what she does. All right, 206 milliamps. Our voltage is right about 120, 121 volts. And we're looking at just under 25 watts. So that is right on its rating. Power factor one, I would expect no less from a resistive element. And ignore this, I haven't programmed this to talk or to say anything about uh, price. So I think that, that checks out pretty well. It's, um, it's not going to go over its rating. But keep in mind, this is not, I believe, a positive temperature coefficient device. So it won't get up to a temperature and then taper off the power until to maintain its um, heat level. This will chuck in 25 watts no matter what. And it will burn up if you don't have it properly um, you know, attached to a, some sort of a heat sink. In this case, like I have an aluminum plate and a, and a big desk. So we'll unplug that. Clearly, it's, uh, it's meeting its rating. So even though it's you know, not the highest quality or most expensive heater, it doesn't really need to be for this application. One more thing to talk about is the supplier I used for the aluminum. I went with McMaster Car. They are, well, a good supplier of good quality stuff at a reasonable enough price. And the shipping is always very fast. It's usually next day. Um, one time I got something same day, which is crazy. But you pay for it. I mean, you really pay for it. They do you dirty up the back, if you know what I mean. Um, so this multi-purpose um, aluminum, you can see the part number right there. I think this was $30. So the, the shipping is almost as expensive as the parts you buy. That's the downside of McMaster. But... If you're looking for quality components, regardless of price, it's a good enough supplier. If you're looking for um, cheap stuff or low shipping costs, yeah, don't go with them. So another thought about where I want to end up with this project, because I, I, I want to put a little bit more work into it. The 25 watt heater actually isn't as bad as I had thought originally in that previous video, because th this is the next day. So I've had a day to use the thing. And once it warms up a little bit more, the top of the desk does get up to about 85 or 86 degrees, which is roughly 10 degrees delta above the ambient temperature or like the temperature at the edge of the desk. That's all fine and well, but I'm not happy with that because it's not quite warm enough. It doesn't feel, the desk never feels warm. It just feels not cold, which is a step better than what it had been, but not perfect. Additionally, I would like to add a second heater, in this case a 50 watt heater, like I mentioned in the previous video. So I have four potential power settings, 0 watts, 25, 50, and 75. So nice 25 watt steps up um, in every setting, depending on what combination I plug the two heaters in at. And I think that gives a, uh, a strong advantage over the current system, which is either 25 watts or 0 watts. Another thing I want to do to reduce the inefficiencies in this is add some thermal compound between the aluminum plate, between that aluminum plate and the MDF. I think I'm having two main problems with this so far, and the aluminum plate is getting pretty darn hot. 
not uncomfortable to touch, but it's, you know, getting warmer, much, much warmer than that MDF. And that makes sense because MDF is a terrible, terrible thermal conductor. It's almost a better thermal insulator than it is a thermal conductor. And, you know, that's just the way wood and fibrous materials like that go. So again, to reduce that inefficiency, I want to add some thermal compound in between the two to increase the thermal coupling between the two. I think that will take away some of the lack of heat transfer between the two. It's not going to make it better. I think the problem is more so that MDF is a terrible thermal conductor, not the thermal coupling. But if I can take out one of those two, I'll get a little bit more efficiency out of it. I won't have to run it quite as hot or risk um, overheating the resistive heating elements here. So I think that's all I have to say on this video. I don't think I need to cover anything else. If you have any questions, let me know. Or if you're considering trying this wacky idea too, you know, let me know that. And uh, until next time, see ya.